everyone, and welcome to the Remembering Akron podcast. I'm your host, Derek Maxfield, and today my guest is Madeline Cummings, a lifelong resident of Akron, New York. Welcome, Madeline. Thank you. Thank you for being with us. <laughs> You're welcome. So, Let's start with uh, your life in Akron. So you were born here then. Yes. Were you born in a hospital? Were you born no, at home? No, I was born in the duplex on Lewis Road. Right at home. Right at home. You, who were your parents? Claire and Mildred Cummings. What did your dad do for a living? He was the gas man here. He, My parents were from Cherry Creek, New York. Oh. And dad was a gas man out of Dunkirk. And he was transferred here. The gentleman that was here retired and the only job open was this one, so my dad had to take it. So he was transferred here in 1929, they moved here. Right at the beginning of the Depression. Yeah, but luckily he worked for the gas company, so he had a job. Oh, so he never suffered from that. No, no. Was your mom a lifelong stay-at-home mom? Yep. How many siblings did you have? None. I you only... were an only child. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so you got pampered a little bit then. Huh? Well, it's everybody says. <laughs> I had to mind. <laughs> did you have any other relatives in the area? Uh, not close. I am very distant. The Cummingses here in Akron are very distant relatives of mine. I see. Well, one of the f- first people my dad got acquainted with was the Cummings <laughs> All right. you know, when they moved here. And my father at that time, he was the only gas man. He did everything. Read the meters, did the billing, repaired. At that time, Batavia, in the Batavia office, they used to sell stoves and refrigerators oh. years ago. And so he, he repaired everything. You know, if a furnace went out at midnight, he had to go and light he the had furnace. To go and do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> did he enjoy it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. And and he retired after a long career. Yeah. Well, he was for he had a stroke in his late fifties and he had to retire. Oh, that's too bad. Passed away when he was only sixty-one years old. Oh, that seems young today, doesn't it? Yeah. And how about your mother? She always stayed at home. <laughs> yeah. And, and and did she live to to be an old lady? She was eighty-nine. Eighty-nine. Now, see, that is a good age, mm-hmm. isn't it? All right. <laughs> And yeah, did you remain living at home most of your life? Yeah. As long as your parents were alive? Yeah. Did you? I see. All right. And you went to school in Akron, I see. Um, uh, Akron at that time must have been a small school when you started there. Well, it was the original high school on, on Bloomingdale. But the what is now a high school was the whole school at that time, all the grades. I see. So K through 12? Mm-hmm. I see. And did you go through through uh, mm-hmm. senior year? Mm-hmm. You did? Okay. So you spent your entire school career in the one building. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. What did you do while you were in school? Were you in any clubs or, or other activities, mm-hmm. athlete or in band? or A chorus and at that time, high Y. It was a division of the YMCA. Hi, why? Now, see, I've never heard of that. Yeah, they don't have it anymore, uh, I, I guess. But okay. at that time, it was a division of the YMCA. Ah, all right. And that was right there at the school, or did they have their mm-hmm. own facility? No, we. it was at the school. What's your favorite memory from high school? <laughs> Do you have one? Not really. I know we used to go to the football games and baseball games. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> homecoming? Did they have homecoming in those days, mm-hmm. like they do today? Not the way they do today, I don't think. No. Do you remember what sports they had at the school when you were there? Yeah, baseball and football. I see. Mostly. Uh huh. Very good. So the. You graduated from high school. What year was that? 1950. 1950, right <laughs> after World War II. How did World War II affect your family? Well, I had cousins that were in the service, mm-hmm. and a very good friend that was killed in Holland. Oh, really? In... Close, someone close to the family. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I see. But your, your father not, never. No, went on. he was. Too young to, for World War One and a little too old for World War Two. <laughs> I see. Yeah, it's kind of kind of the in between generation. Mm-hmm. Do you remember listening to the radio or uh, 
anything about World War II that, that you thought was particularly uh, a memory for you? Well, I remember when the war was over in Japan because my cousin was in the Marines in the Pacific. Uh, that's and a dangerous so. <laughs> place to be. Yeah, he was in the Battle of Saipan. Mm -hmm. That was one of the major battles. So I remember when the war was over, we were on vacation uh, at my aunt's in Fredonia, and they had a big celebration in Dunkirk over the water, over Lake Erie, and had fireworks. And uh -huh. <laughs> I remember that. I'll bet. Do you remember ever listening to Franklin Roosevelt's radio shows, his fireside chats? Not uh, really. <laughs> a lot of folks tell me that remember the war. That they that's one of the things that they remembered the most oh. is his warm voice over the radio. <laughs> so I I thought I would ask. Yeah. Well, I was still fairly young then, so yeah, um, yeah. <clears throat> so what did you do after high school? I went to work for Kendall's Express. It was a small trucking company here in Akron. A trucking company? Mm -hmm. Did they do long service trucking? No, just short between Buffalo and Batavia. Mm -hmm. But they transferred uh, goods to the bigger companies in Buffalo. We had a, a small office in Buffalo and a ramp, or a dock. Mm -hmm. And they had uh, exclusive Ford gum. Kendall's hauled the Ford gum into Buffalo to all the different carriers that took it all over. Now, Ford gum. You got Ford gum and machine company. Gumballs. Oh, all right. Like the gumballs. <laughs> wow. That's a kind of an interesting story. And now, Ford gum is the only gum manufacturer in the United States. Is it really? Now, see, I yeah. found that out from, Paris, from Brian Perry. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> when he spoke about, on Perry's. He said because sugar is so expensive. Oh, it, I suppose that makes sense. Now, see, I didn't know that. that the only the I only, didn't until yeah. Brer, I heard Brian. You know. So all the gumballs we see in the machines are all made by the same company yep. now. Yeah. That's oh, yeah. interesting. So you were the bookkeeper mm -hmm. for this company, mm -hmm. and how long were you with them? Around 20 years. Okay. They went out of business. Mm -hmm. The, uh, oh, what do you call it, got involved. Unions got involved. I see. Which is, don't, don't let me talk about unions. Okay, so you don't have a good feeling about those. Mm, I see. Not now. When they started, they were a good thing, but they got way out of hand. I see. Well, I think I'd feel the same way if it cost me a job. <laughs> and you went on to Kendall's Express? That's where I started. That's where you started. Okay. Yeah. All right. And what did you do after you retired from uh, Kendall's Express? Ford Gum. I w worked in the office at Ford Gum. Okay. So you went basically from, from one to the other. Okay. <laughs> All right. And you were them for another 20 years. Around that. Mm -hmm. All right. Do you have any great memories from that? Mm. Not really. Just everyday Maybe. office work yeah. during that time? Mm hmm Purchasing, I ended up in purchasing at the end. Mm -hmm. and, and when did you retire? 1997. 1997. So that's, that's a few years back then. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I understand that you've been quite involved with the uh, Methodist Church here in Akron. Is that true? Well, not lately. I used to be more involved. I was a Sunday school secretary for years. Really? Then I worked for one of the pastors. Between my job, between uh, Kendall's and Ford Gum, I uh, was the church secretary. Oh, I see. For about a year. And you worked for the Sunday school as well, you said? Yeah, I was Sunday school secretary for a long time. Mm -hmm. Did you do any classes? Did you teach any classes for the Sunday school? Mm, no. Just did the secretarial kind of work? Mm hmm. So you've been a member of the United Methodist Church for a long time then. I joined the year the church burned, 1942. The now, old, old me, church burned. Now tell me about that. What happened here? Well, it burned. So is <laughs> the, it, was it an thought, accident? They thought it was, I think they thought it was electrical. Oh, my. And so the church that stands here now is a rebuilt one. Yes. So at that time, we joined church at the high school, had church in the high school. Oh. 
<laughs> until they built the new church. Well, after a while, we joined with the Baptist church and changed off. I see. Having services. They'd have services, I think, for a while at the Baptist and then for a while at the Methodist. Oh, and well, that's a good arrangement. That mm -hmm, worked out it all right. Was. Huh? Is your, were your parents originally Methodist, too? Yes. So, lifelong Methodist. Yep. So, you have some um, interesting memories about the town to tell us about. Uh, you remember some of the original businesses, like Bitterman's? Bitterman's was a dry goods store. George's was a variety store. And these are right here on Main Street? Yeah. And the Laden shop, they sold oh, gift items and some clothing. And the Pam Rose shop, they sold clothes. And these are, are long gone? Oh, yeah. I see. Yeah, yeah. But you had fond mem memories of going in these places. Mm -hmm. Tell me about the Oasis. Well, that was a ice cream store, and they sold magazines. And Did they have a soda fountain? Yeah, I had a soda fountain. Do you remember when that closed? No. No? These places, it was a long time ago, and most yeah. of them closed. But I understand that that was kind of a hopping place, the Oasis. Yeah. A lot yeah. of people have good memories of that. <clears throat> but it's been gone for some time. Yeah. How about the Park Theater? That was connected to the Oasis at that time. You could go from the, yeah. well, Guy's Sub Shop was the original theater was in there. A sub shop was the original theater. Yep. That's kind of interesting. And it's, they were connected so you could go to, from the theater into the Oasis at that time. So if you wanted to get some ice cream afterwards oh, or something. Oh, I see. All right. Or even concession during a, a movie or something, I mm -hmm. suppose. Well, that's kind of an interesting arrangement. Mm -hmm. So you had a, a pretty interesting Main Street here in town. Mm -hmm. What was Pixie's? Pixie's was a grocery store. Uh, okay, and was that the only grocery store in town at oh, that time? Or? No, Pixley's was out Cedar Street. There was uh, Hitchcock's was mostly a meat market, but they, it was noted for their meats, but they sell groceries too. And there was a market basket, and can't remember the name of the other. They were grocery stores. Mm -hmm. So there was about three years ago. And I understand you used to enjoy band concerts in the old gazebo. No? There wasn't a gazebo. I, Nancy said that, but there wasn't a gazebo. Oh, no? The, the band stand, used, it was up above. It was built up. There were restrooms on the bottom, and the band stand was up, up above oh, years ago. Quite... I see. So that's quite a large <laughs> building then. Well, no, no, it wasn't, no, no okay. it wasn't very large. All right. And that's here. That was here on the town green. Yeah. I see. Where that? Uh, I guess you'd call it a gazebo. Where the band plays now, that was a, f a fountain. Oh. With Neptune in the middle and <laughs> all the, the cherubs around. Oh, really? Years ago. That must have been something to see. <laughs> and why did they take that out? That sounds so charming. That I don't know. You don't know. No. All right. I guess maybe because they wanted the bandstand there. Maybe. I, All right. So what do you do these days to keep busy? Oh, just work around the house. <laughs> do you have any hobbies? Not special. No? Okay. Do you, uh, like... A particular kind of music that you've always liked to listen to? Like country music. Do you like I like music? all kinds, but I like especially country. Yeah. Like. Do you have any favorites? Uh, you know, an old favorite of mine is Patsy Klein. Oh, yes, yes. Johnny Cash is a yeah. favorite of mine. Well, years ago, Ramblin' Lou, have you heard of Ramblin' oh, Lou? Oh, sure. He has a radio, he, right? Uh, yeah. His daughter and wife run it now because Ramblin' Lou passed away a I few years that, ago. Yeah. But he used to uh, have uh, the uh, name uh, country music people come in to Klein, or um, what's in Buffalo? Klein Hands? Klein Hands Music Hall in Buffalo. Okay. So we saw quite a few of the, I saw Johnny Cash there. Uh, Dolly Parton and she puts on a good show, doesn't and she? And the fella that was with her at the time, she worked with. Okay. 
I wonder if there was Loretta any. Lynn. Okay, Loretta Lynn, an old favorite. Saw quite a few there. Is Loretta Lynn still, still with us these days? Is yeah. She, is she? Okay. I don't know if she performs anymore. Or not. Yeah, She's, she must be kind of up there these days, huh? Yeah. Yeah. She used to have a very sweet voice, huh? <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I'll, I'll never forget meeting Reba McIntyre years oh. ago when, <laughs> when I was at a radio station, one of the high points of my career. I bet. She's uh, quite the lady. Yeah. Do you follow politics at all? Not that much. No? You have a favorite president that you remember? Not really. Not really. Some people like to follow politics. Other people like to stay away from it. These days, people tend to want to shy away from it because the partisanship is getting too much for some this people these days. President now. I <laughs> well, these are difficult times in some ways. You know, one of the things that older folks tell me is, I don't know, you know, if I had grandchildren, how they would get along these days. I hear that kind of thing from my parents. Yeah. Well, it was... Very nice to meet you, Madeline, and I thank you for coming on. Yeah. Well, I don't know if you wanted to mo know more about the gas company or not. You I'd know, be happy to talk about anything you'd like to talk about. That, uh, well, I guess I told you that they had a store and years ago and sold the uh, appliances. Mm -hmm. And then they, they had an office in Clarence at that time and workers. If there was any big gas leak or anything, they would come over from Clarence. Oh, I see. You know, Hmm. Because, as they say, my dad was the only one here. <laughs> yeah. Well, he must have been a busy man most of the time then, yeah. huh? Yeah. But any any big problems, they came over from Clarence. Oh, I see. All right. Do you know anything about the ancestry of your family? Uh, did you have family members that came over from Europe that you know of? Well, I know my dad's mother was Irish, but... They didn't come over. Her family didn't. Th mm -hmm. th that I know of, but she was, she was Irish. So you know you have some Irish in the family. And Scotch. And Scotch. Too. Okay. My dad was on the Scotch side. Or oh, I two. see. All right. Well, the British Isles, right? <laughs> Very nice. Well, thank you so much, Madeline, for coming on. It was nice to meet you. Thanks for listening in, and remember to tune in to the next episode of Remembering Akron.